right? And as we continue to walk down memory lane and remember the second president of the Republic of Kenya, Daniel Toroiti Charapmoy, who died this morning at 5.20 a.m. at the Nairobi Hospital in ICU. He had been ailing for a while. We are now joined by Senator Isaac Maura, who, Senator, maybe just to give you an opportunity also to send your condolences and possibly just what you remember of Moy. Yeah, I think I want to pass my condolences to uh, the, the late President uh, Daniel Trujicharap Moy. And I remember him because of Maziwa Watoto Wanyayo, mm. which was a real prelude uh, that we enjoyed when we were young. Of course, when I was small, my little mind used to think that Moy is second to God uh, because of the way I could see his uh, images everywhere high up on the wall. And also because, you know, everything was like Mukurima number one, a professor number one, everything number one. And then we used to say, Tikisa, Tikisa, you know, kind of motto, you know, mm. those kind of things. Eh? And then, of course, the songs that we used to be taught uh, during Madaraka Day, Jamuhuri Day, Moi Day, they were to, about praising him. So he's really fundamentally uh, changed the course of history of Kenya. I think a lot of things that we continue to see their ramifications uh, were born out of his regime. He was somebody who dreamt of industrializing this country. You remember the numerical machining complex, the Nyayoka, uh, the Nyaobas, some of whom which had been uh, assembled here. Uh, but of course, we remember him for both good and bad. I don't think I want to go for the bad. Mm -hmm. Many would have also seen him as a dictator, somebody who never uh, agreed to uh, hear different opinions. And of course, the clamor for multipartyism and the change of Section 2A. Kenyans, uh, I think uh, newspapers will be replete with his uh, legacy. And uh, he's lived for long, 95 or 96 years. I mean, 18 years after he left uh, you know, office in 2002. And I still remember how. Uh, that morning when we woke up to the swearing-in of Moi Kibaki, how the country was extremely excited, you know. So really, Moi has left uh, a lasting impression. I don't think there is any politician uh, in whose uh, monuments and schools and roads and uh, other public amenities have been named after more than him. Then more than Moi Kiyoko. And as we walk down memory lane, the question here remains also that we need to ask ourselves, we that are the living, are we following in what you know our forefathers possibly envisaged as a country? 18 years after Moi, uh, you know, um, surrendered the instruments of power, uh, which we have already mentioned was peacefully done, albeit uh, there may have been pressure, but at least he was, um, you know, um, reasonable enough to actually do that because he could have refused. But do you feel like as a country we are walking towards the direction that we ought to, and we are where we ought to be? I think uh, there are certain positive gains that we've made and positive strides that we've made. Uh, when you look at President Moy's era and reign, and I keep repeating that word reign, there were many gaps uh, democracy-wise, the corruption was high, there were many deficiencies. And of course there were certain positiveness that uh, you, you need to think hard to find them. The adoption of a new constitution in 2010 the election, the peaceful transfer of power in uh, 2002 cemented the argument that power in this country will be transferred peacefully when somebody loses an election or when one's term ends. I think those are certain gains, fundamental gains, that must be respected. The freedom of speech, the depoliticization of the military. And I think that is something that we must talk about as a country. While our neighboring countries, the <coughs> militaries have been at the forefront. You've seen what has happened in Uganda. You see what is in Rwanda and Burundi, and also South Sudan. The cent centrality of the military in the politics of those nations. In Kenya, the military today has stuck in the barracks. And part of it is the culture that Moi created, the culture that Jomo Kenyatta created, the culture that uh, Honorable Kibaki he pursued. We, we don't see the military at the forefront. Of course, there are certain losses that are happening. There are certain reversals that are happening. Uh, with the passing of the new constitution, we anticipated that the judiciary will be free from executive overbearing. We, we are seeing that happening mm. now, reversals of uh, certain gains. The, the, the centrality, again, of NIS in decision making in our country. Mm -hmm. Now, when you look at that in totality, while somebody might say it's the BBI versus what and what, but again, when you bring these organizations to the center of our politics, then the neutral arbitrariness of these organs mm -hmm. suffer. When you push the judiciary in a certain way, 
Yeah, if you push judicial in a certain way, you deny them certain funds. Basically, you are taking us back to in the 80s when the tenure of judges was never secured. Mm. We, we must be careful not to slide back. To we slide must back. be careful mm. not to personalize our rule. Mm. We must be very careful to respect the current constitution as is. And even if there are changes to come, certain uh, tenants, for example, the term limit of the president, must really not be tampered with. Mm. If, if you, Tanzania has managed to live that long, we've seen President Kamwini, Mkapa, Kikwete, and they've gone mm. without wanting backdoor entrance into executive uh, privileges. We, we as a country must safeguard those that, gains. Absolutely. And uh, Honorable Ahome, mm. we'll, you'll agree with me that uh, there is definitely gains that we have made. Do you feel, are you proud to be a legislator in this day and age today, given that there are those who feel that we might be sliding back to where we came from? Uh, actually, I'm one of those people who have said, uh, and, and I, I said it in the barrio of Rubia, that if we are not careful, and, and I was kind of addressing myself to His Excellency the President, because that was a right place and the barrio had a lot of uh, issues to deal with the, the fight and clamor for democracy and, you know, the place of Rubia, the role he played with Matiba. I felt that because I had, we as a country, unless we want to be dishonest to ourselves, must say, like uh, Macau has said here, Kyoko, Kyoko, Kyoko. sorry, Kyoko. that there are those things that uh, are coming to play, which appear that uh, <clears throat> we could slide back to bad habits of the, the of regime, the of the past, of mm. the regime, the Kanu, let me just say the Kanu regime. And uh, we, you know, where, where we are as a country, we must be proud of it. And it is not uh, something that we were given. The country fought. People, Kenyans lost lives, their property suffered, made sacrifices. You, if, if you bring all those people who actually were detained, the Nyayo chambers, all those things, you, you arrests, you know, detentions without trial, you will see. And there was a lot of support from the civil society, meaning the country, the people supported the movement, the transition from the, the regime, the intolerant regime, the Kanu regime, to a multi-party democracy where you can speak wide freedoms you know, of movement, political affiliation, speaking your mind. And uh, therefore, this was put together by Kenyans in our 2010 constitution. That document, if, if we could just even implement half of our 2010 constitution, mm. some mm. of the complaints that are coming up mm. wouldn't be there. You know, look at the Bill of Rights mm. itself. Look at the values, the principles, you know, transparency, inclusivity, you know, or shared prosperity, um, <clears throat> economic freedoms, you know, ensuring that even access to health, uh, you know, human rights records mm. to, you know, we ha don't have good records, for human mm. rights records, but if we were now to start fixing, because, you know, we can't live in the past. We must, as a country, then defend the institutions that have been established mm. by the current constitution. And if the current government were just, you know, and, and I, when I speak that, I'm not removing myself from the government because as a legislator, I'm, I'm proud because parliament is one arm of the government. Mm. Sometimes, you know, when we speak about the government, we it seem to like narrow it. Third party. Yeah, like a third party. <laughs> and we need to, we seem to narrow it down mm. to the executive alone. You know, you, you know, you have the commissions, which are the fourth arm of government, right. but we have the legislature, mm. the legislature, we have the independent uh, judiciary, and of course we have the executive. Mm. If all these people did their work, as now prescribed by the Constitution, without interference, interdependence, together, meaning that we guard each other, say, guard your space, you know, work as, 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 as prescribed. Mm. We, we would be making progress. And let me come we'd to you. We would make progress. Yeah, Senator. Yeah, and the judiciary right yeah. now, mm. even in parla and Parliament, mm. are not sitting at the place where the Constitution actually placed them. There are gains. Areas that there are gains that we could be losing. Mm. Like we would want an independent judiciary. You know, and the independence starts with the past. With the past. The, yeah. All right. Uh, let me bring in Senator. And there are many who might criticize the, mm. the former regimes and what has happened before. But it is also true that we, if not careful, could lose some gains that we have very uh, painfully fought for so far. Do you feel that we could be sliding back as a country given where we are today? 
You know, I grew up on a boy regime, and uh, I remember the, the Nyayo torture chambers and how people were really, really, I mean, dr lives were destroyed. I remember in 2002, uh, there were documentaries that were done of people who had been uh, taken to those, you know, chambers. And for the first time, you could see how it affected families and all of that. Um, I think uh, the role of us is to keep eternal vigilance. We have a culture of human rights, and that is very difficult to take away from. Uh, so gains are, are, are lost slowly, you know. Sometimes you don't see it coming. And we need to be eternally vigilant on that. Mm. Um, the constitutional rule of law seems to be, I think, the World Justice Project last year ranked us very low on the rule of law. Mm. And the uh, majority of our problems are actually because of the lack of rule of law. Uh, if then there's no rule of law, it's the rule of the jungle. And uh, that is not something that... And these are things that we're trying to fix as a country. Do you feel that uh, where we are politically speaking, I mean, um, uh, one of the things we're going to discuss if this had not come up was even basically building bridges, which is really meant to take us from where we were to where we are meant to be. Is that the direction that we should be taking yeah, as a Yeah, BBI is a, is a conversation. It's a national conversation. Uh, that needs to e encompass everybody, all the shades of a political opinion. Which it isn't doing so um, far. I think people are being hy hypocritical. They're also playing political games. And I think that is not sincere. Uh, from both ends of whatever divide that is either real or imaginary. Uh, we have a document that is really a proper diagnosis of what is ailing our country. Very good document. But it fails, it falls short of giving solutions. So in my thinking, I think BBI2 is supposed to ensure that. So what we are going to see is the encapsulation of uh, the proposals into a referendum bill mm. that then would speak to these ills. But you will not resolve everything through the law because you, you cannot legislate character. And, and, I'm and beginning to actually think, Mike, Kenyans are very good people, but also there are many in leadership who are extremely dishonest, con men, tricksters. And uh, politics for me has become not a matter of truths and lies, but half truths and half lies. And that's, that is what makes this country not move forward. Mm. Because sometimes people speak from both ends of their mouth. And you can't really tell whether they mean well for the country or it is, uh, you know, that juxtaposition of uh, making change but also attaining political ambition. See, uh, your cameraman was showing us how Moy was able to outwit his competitors to become, you know, the first, uh, the commander in chief. And you can hear even Moy prefer Dr. Kikonyo Kiano and all of that. So, because of those games, political games of who attains political power and who gets a credit for transformation of the country, a lot, a lot is really lost. And I think good leaders fall by the wayside because of those shenanigans. That's the challenge of our leadership. Mm. Uh, because sometimes it becomes very clouded. And then now when you put some ingredients around the tribe, you know, and you must also conform to certain political formations, then a lot really is lost. But I think uh, good leaders must rise above that, must, uh, you know, permit that. Because they say that uh, by the end of the day, you are not going to be judged because of how strong you are, how intelligent you are, how rich you are, but how, how adaptable, adaptable you are in terms of political, in political landscape, and even just generally in life. So that is what we are looking for, you know, that magic bullet. But, 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 but I think also when you talk about human rights, it's not just about gross violation of human rights, 